Breaking now at 6, the state attorney's office has decided not to file charges in the death of a nine-month-old baby. Zachary Jackson was found unresponsive in a car seat at a family home daycare in Claremont in September. Investigators say one of the owners put the baby boy in a car seat after he climbed out of a pack and play. The state attorney's office says there is insufficient evidence that the owners of that daycare caused his death. News 6 reporter Nikki Zizaza is covering the story tonight. She'll bring you a report tonight at 11. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. A young mom's ex-boyfriend is behind bars tonight, accused of planning her murder. And new tonight, we are hearing 911 calls made by him right after the shooting. We first broke the arrest on News 6 at noon. Nicole Morales Arena's boyfriend, Michael Javier Mejas, is on the left. Police arrested him for premeditated murder. Two other men were also arrested as accomplices. Now, Kissimmee police found Nicole Morales Arenas shot at the Arbors of Sendera condo complex after 11 a.m. yesterday, and she later died at the hospital. News 6 reporter Jerry Askin is live at the Osceola County Courthouse tonight where the suspects appeared today. Jerry? Lisa, yes, and the alleged shooter never told dispatchers he was the one who opened fire or that he even knew the victim. This all happening as we're finding out more about that victim who friends say was a working mother who loved her two kids. Where was she shot at? On the arm. Kissimmee police just released this 911 call made Sunday morning by 21-year-old Michael Mejias. He appeared before a judge today on the first-degree murder charge. Uh, somebody got shot. But that somebody police say was his ex-girlfriend, 21-year-old Nicole Morales Arenas. And police say he's the person who pulled the trigger. And the whole time on that 911 call, he never told dispatchers or let it be known that he even knew the victim. In fact, his tone during that call to police seemed pretty nonchalant. Are you near the person who got shot? Yes. Okay, do you know who they are? Uh, it's a girl. It's a girl? Police say Adrian Rias and Victor Castillo were found inside the apartment and are now charged with accessory after the facts and tampering with evidence, police say, for handling the weapon after the shooting. Friends say Arenas had two small kids and was working as a medical assistant. She was a really nice person. She wasn't a trouble person either. Yeah, and police say they're still working to find a motive, but did say Mejia said he was trying to scare his ex-girlfriend when he opened fire. Now, at last check, all three men remain behind bars on no bond here in Osceola County. And as for Mejia's records show he's been arrested before in Osceola County for uh, traffic offenses, well, uh, one traffic offense at least, and for a prior gun charge. We're live in Kissimmee in Osceola County. I'm Jerry Askin, News 6. Jerry, thank you. Covering Orange County, what began as an aggravated battery call ended in a death investigation. Tonight, deputies are working to find out how a man in his 20s was found dead. This happened at a home along Trevarthen Road near the 417 and North Econ Trail in Orange County. News 6's Vanessa Ariza is live in the neighborhood for us tonight. So, Vanessa, you spoke with the victim's family members. What are they saying about all this? Matt, understandably upset, his uncle telling us that his nephew wasn't the best at all times, didn't necessarily hang with the best crowds at times, but he was trying to create a better life. Now, we were actually able to get closer to the scene within the past 10, 15 minutes. That caution tape has been taken down. People can drive through here, but this is still a very active scene as investigators work to find out what exactly led up to that shooting. <laughs> The family of this morning shooting victim waited behind the caution tape, blocking off part of Trevarthen Road. Their loved one shot at a home earlier this morning. He was a very neat person. You know, he had problems in life like anyone else does in life. Everybody has issues in life. Daryl Hare is the victim's uncle. Deputies aren't yet releasing his name, but Hare says his nephew was in his late 20s and had children. He admits he wasn't always with the right crowd, but he was trying to make a better life. He's always, always had a already smiled and laughed on his face, you know what I mean? So he was a good kid at heart. Initially, deputies were called to a home along Trevarthen Road for an aggravated battery call. But when they arrived, they found the victim with a gunshot wound. Orlando Fire Rescue tried to save him, but he died at the house. Deputies say the person who called 911 is working with them, but who that is in relation to the victim isn't being said. I can't really say that it was a surprise, but you know, it's uh. It's hurting. 
And we spoke with one man whose business is actually along this stretch. He said that he has surveillance video that actually point out to the road. So that's one aspect that investigators are looking at, all in hopes of that it will give them more information in this case. If you have any information about this shooting that happened this morning, you're asked to call Crime Line. Matt? Vanessa Ariza, thank you. We are committed to catching his killer. That's what the Orange County Sheriff's Office told us today about the case of a 15-year-old murdered while walking to school. The teen was gunned down while walking to Boone High School in Orlando last month. A $15,000 reward is now being offered for information leading to an arrest. Last month, deputies released surveillance video of a car of interest, but still no suspects have been named. So far, Crimeline says they have received 25 to 30 tips about his death. A two-year-old girl hurt after falling into a rhino exhibit at the Brevard Zoo is out of the hospital. She was released earlier today. We've been covering this story since last week when the girl fell through some steel poles separating rhinos and zoo guests. We'll let you know as soon as we learn more about her condition. Now, a lot of you have asked, and we can tell you those rhinos were not punished at all for this. Also in Brevard County, new legislation aims to stop the sale of dogs and cats in pet stores. County Commission Vice Chair Brian Lober is behind the idea. He is a volunteer with animal rescue organizations and says he wants to stop puppy mills and kitten factories. But some pet stores in the county say the proposed law would almost certainly put them out of business. I'm very proud of where we source our puppies. There's not a better source in this country period. By shutting down legitimate pet stores, and I'm all for shutting down illegitimate pet stores, and they're out there, they'll encourage puppy mills, not diminish puppy mills. Under the proposal, pet stores still would be allowed to offer cats and dogs from shelters, animal rescue organizations, or hobby breeders who do not handle more than 20 puppies or kittens a year. Commissioners will discuss the proposal tomorrow. A final vote would be in the coming weeks. In less than 24 hours, Florida will officially have a new governor. Ron DeSantis is promising to move quickly on a number of issues. In fact, he has decided to cancel the inaugural parade so he can get right to work. The swearing-in ceremony will be held at 11 a.m. outside the old Capitol building in Tallahassee. News 6 will be there, and we will bring you live coverage on ClickOrlando.com. Also happening tomorrow, thousands of convicted felons across our state will be able to vote. It's because Amendment 4 was passed in November. This morning, several convicted felons showed up outside the Supervisor of Elections Office to express their anticipation for tomorrow. There are still questions about the legislation, though, after Ron DeSantis said he wanted lawmakers to get involved with rolling out this change. You can read more about Amendment 4 and 10 other approved amendments taking effect on ClickOrlando.com. Just days after they... Bear, the Bars was sworn in. The new governor and members of the Florida cabinet will discuss the Groveland Four case. The Board of Executive Clemency will meet regarding the four African-American men wrongly accused of raping a white woman back in 1949. The upcoming meeting follows calls to pardon the Groveland Four. Last month, DeSantis made a statement saying he wanted to make the issue a priority. The partial government shutdown is likely to affect the U.S. return to launching astronauts again. In a tweet on Saturday, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said his company is about a month away from the first orbital test flight of Crew Dragon, the spacecraft designed to carry astronauts for NASA. Find out how the shutdown is delaying the launch and when it could happen at clickorlando.com space. Hey, a traffic alert for drivers who use I-4. Yeah, coming up, the new change following nearly a year of delays. Tom? Take a look over my shoulder. We don't have any rain close to home. Our frontal zone is way up here. I'll be back to pinpoint that when it arrives for you and what will it mean. Check out the weekend from here as well. See you in a few. First, though, it's time for nearly a million Florida drivers to pay up. This week, you could get a bill from SunPass. We'll explain who will have to pay up and why now. You're watching News 6 at 6, getting results for you tonight. We'll be right back. Only on 6 tonight, we've learned SunPass will finally start sending out backlogged bills to toll-by-plate customers. That is around a million drivers who will have to pay up starting in the next few days after SunPass delayed billing since the summer because the new system was not accurate. News 6's Eric Von Inken is live in Seminole County tonight sorting all of this out for us. So, Eric, who exactly will get a bill and how big could it be? 
could be tens, Lisa, hundreds of dollars, perhaps even thousands of dollars, depending on how much you've driven on the toll roads over the past six months. And remember, this is not customers who use transponders. This is toll by plate customers. In other words, people who pay extra for the convenience of having their plate read as they go through the reader, and then they get a monthly bill paying as they go, not prepaid. 221 days after the state tried to upgrade the SunPass system and failed, causing all kinds of billing delays, SunPass is finally collecting. SunPass confirmed the new six today. The tolling agency will start sending out backlogged bills to all toll-by-plate customers, the ones who don't have a transponder, now that SunPass has verified those bills. So how's that the consumer's problem? I don't know. Farrah Davids is bracing for the bill. She knows she used the state toll roads, the turnpike, and portions of the beach line and greenway. She just doesn't know how much. I get it, but again, um, I think that there, if there was a system in place initially and it was their error, then I think that they should have to go ahead and start over. Let's do a clean slate. It was our fault. We got it straight. And let's just, let's just make the pass the pass. SunPass says it will waive late fees and penalties and customers will have until the end of March to pay, but some will get big bills because of the backlog. FDOT says its toll by plate transactions totaled almost a hundred million dollars statewide since June. Especially with the government shutdown and everything happening with people's uh, finances and paychecks and things being far behind, it's just not a good time for that. Not a good time for a big bill, she says. Now, this is interesting. FDOT says there is a four-month deadline for the company that manages SunPass to process all of the unpaid toll-by-plate toll. So is it possible that that company, Lisa, could pick up some of this tab? It is possible, but not likely at this point, given that they're sending out those big bills later this week, but we will certainly keep asking. A lot of frustration, Eric. Thank you. And customers who have any questions regarding account activity should call the SunPass Customer Service Center. We posted that number in the bottom of this story at clickorlando.com. A traffic alert now that is some good news for drivers after months of delays. A new ramp is now open along I-4 near downtown Orlando. We spotted several drivers making some last-minute lane adjustments this morning after Realizing that the on-ramp to eastbound I-4 from Garland Avenue has moved, the new ramp will allow for traffic to merge onto eastbound I-4 from Garland Avenue at Amelia Street. The on-ramp's opening was delayed because of cracks in one of the support beams for the overpass that goes over Colonial. FDOT never revealing what caused those cracks, but they say after extensive testing, it was determined the ramp is structurally sound. Now, to help you stay ahead of any changes on the road, we have an interactive traffic map available anytime at ClickRelance com slash traffic plus traffic and safety expert Steve Montiero is on News 6 every morning to help you with your commute to work. Now it's the first day of our second chance giveaway. Yes, you can win a brand new Series 4 Apple Watch with Apple Care. Ta-da. Today's prize keyword, this is the big moment here, timepiece. Oh. One word. Remember, I before E, except after C. <laughs> Go to clickorlando.com backslash second chance right now. Mm -hmm. You enter that keyword for your chance to win. Your chances are a whole lot better than the lottery, and this is yeah. a pretty fantastic prize. So good luck to you. That is really nice. I'm going to try not to walk away with this. Ha. Hold tight. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrell is joining us now. And we have some kind of Christmas-like temperatures this week. You think? I do. It was chilly this morning. Well, it was chill, but it was actually above normal. That's what I keep trying to tell. It's been so warm <laughs> that getting back to normal is like, hey, what happened? Yeah, yeah. right. Well, it's crazy. Take a look at what's going on this weekend. Do you guys hate crime and love chili? Yes. yes. Ta-da. <laughs> it's the 11th annual Crime Line Chili Cook-Off. That's my line, by the way. I hate crime, it. I love chili. Mm -hmm. Trademark. Yeah, but no, no, Barb wants to use it. I'm like, yeah, use that. It's, I'm all about using that. Crime Line Chili Cook-Off, 7 Harley Davidson this Saturday morning. I'll be there by about 10 o'clock. We start sampling the chili at 11. Come join us. It's only $5 to taste all the samples. It's fun, fun, fun till Daddy takes the T-Bird away. I'm telling you, we were out there in 2010. It was like 28 degrees and spitting snow. Wow. It will not do that this weekend. Come see us. Radar right now looking great. 
clear as can be. No radar echoes, nothing out there to track. Everything's good to go. There's your cold front right there. And even this cold front, it's not going to do anything wrong to us. It's going to cool us down. Lisa will cry a little bit, but it's not going to be bad. Daytime high today was 79. That is 8 degrees above normal. Overnight low this morning, 53, but check it out. A normal overnight low. We're supposed to drop to 49 this time of year. We just haven't. We didn't this morning. 53 was the overnight low. It was cool, but, you know, not as cool as it normally should be. Wow, look at that. Spectrum camera has a beautiful shot. It's awesome. Temperature reading in Orlando 71, Melbourne 72, and Ocala 71. We're dark in Daytona Beach. Temperature reading here at news time is 65 degrees. Temps all over the area, 67 up there in Gainesville, 71 Ocala, 69 Leesburg, 71 in Cocoa Beach. 24-hour temperature change. We're 8 degrees warmer right now in Orlando than we were yesterday at the same time. 6 degrees warmer at the Cape and 7 degrees warmer in Ocala. Here's the satellite and radar. You see that big load cranking, pushing the cold front your way. Weather story for tonight, patchy fog late. Tomorrow, warm and sunny after the fog gets out. Then the cooler air settles in by midweek. That's where the cold air is right now, north and west of Dallas through Oklahoma. It will be here, though, not so much tomorrow. Tomorrow's a really pretty, warm, sunny day after the fog. But on Wednesday, clear as can be, and that colder air is funneling in. It'll be breezy, and there'll be a little bite to that temperature. Low tonight, 56. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning. Daytime high tomorrow goes to 79 degrees, so above normal again tomorrow. Check out the week ahead. 79 does it for the high, the low tomorrow night, 58. Then on Wednesday, breezy, 73, the low 43. Thursday's daytime high is only 60. Friday, 67, and Saturday for the Crime Line Chili Cook-Off, 73. A chilly Thursday there, Tom. All right, thank you. Well, a setback for SpaceX, a test of the capsule that will launch astronauts, is being delayed. Why the company blames the government. That's coming up on News 6 at 7. Also at 7, an I-4 construction worker plummets about 60 feet. What we've learned about what went wrong. Also, a driver on the run from Miami police slams his truck right through a railroad crossing signal, but that crash <laughs> did not stop him. See how this ended coming up at 7. The newsroom was glued to that <laughs> earlier today. You would have thought a football game was on. Ryan there is, is one here. Tonight. Yeah, yeah, there's something going Just on tonight, Just a minor right? one, This right? is the way we should have it, right? Number one versus number two, the Mutual Admiration Society, Clemson and Alabama. <laughs> we'll preview that. Plus, we'll tell you about the big reason UCF star is on the rise on the hardwood.